What's going on, folks? It's March 29th, 2024. It is time to lay down the first fertilizer application for the season. Just gave a mow and cleaned up everything. Grass is ready to be uh, fed. Although it's uh, very windy today, so it's not a very good day to be doing this. But I have no choice because I it will be very busy the next few days. So the plan today is to lay down 12-024 stress and then I'm also laying Carbon Pro G and then I'm gonna apply Turf Plex and Nutrizolve. And then that needs to be watered in the next day which I don't know if I'll even have time to do that because the, the game plan was to water it in with uh, RGS and Humic 12. Uh, maybe I'll have to do it early in the morning tomorrow. That's probably be my only time I can do it but yeah let's go ahead and get started uh, let's not waste any time and go ahead and start applying and feed this lawn okay first thing I'm gonna do is lay down carbon pro G I'll be using carbon pro G all this year I thought about Essential G, but it's too expensive. Um, it's like 60 bucks a bag. Well, uh, Carbon Pro G, what I get it for is like way cheaper. Uh, gotta be careful not to tip over the uh, earth away spreader. So sad that's windy today. It's gonna affect how I spread this thing. And especially 12024. That stuff's very, very the pro size is 80. Uh, SGN 80. And it's like I think it's small enough to where wind could take it, right? So gotta be kinda cautious on that. My time is running short today too. I was supposed to start at like eleven o'clock. But I was busy, so I didn't get started until almost one. All right, for the most part, everything fell through the soil sifter, so I'm just gonna assume that I'm not gonna have issues today with this, but you never know. All right, let's see if this will spread. I have a feeling it won't. Nope. Nothing's coming out. I'm gonna have to take this to uh, 23, just like I said before. Some of it's coming out, a little bit here. There we go. We'll do a pass, make it make a U-turn, come back this way. There it goes, now it's starting to drop, okay. Let me take it back down to 15. So weird how like you come up with these techniques to apply stuff. It's never the same for everybody. Oh, back down to 15. Nothing's coming out again. Okay, go back up to 23. I might have to just start at 23 for this part of the lawn, and then uh, take it to 15 on the other parts. Yeah, I think the pro size for Carbon Pro G is just way too big to be applying it on 15. Maybe 20 is more ideal. I actually might try, try 20. Okay, a lot of a lot of it's coming out here. Let me, uh, let me set the setting to 20 and see what happens here. Let's try this. Yeah, 20 is good. Okay. Well, actually, eh, let me just try 15 again because I think now that it's running, let me try 15. There we go. Okay. Now it's coming out. All right. Let me turn on to the, uh, the side thing. Make a, I'm going to do two perimeter passes in order to get uh, good coverage around the perimeter of the lawn.
Maybe the wind will help me uh, blow Carbon Pro G that I get on the uh, driveway or the concrete back into the lawn. Maybe that's the only benefit of having wind. Yeah, we're rocking and rolling now. Okay. Man, dude. That one time when I was applying it, and I, it was like the 20, 2023 video that I was doing it. And I think I was applying like double dark that time. My goodness, dude. I wasted like 45 minutes just trying to get the dang thing out. So. Alright, I got it on the 15 setting now. I'm just making like three foot turns here to make, make sure I get good coverage. It was a learning process for me with the Circway 2050P because uh, that time I applied a Humid Max, I was making like seven foot turns. <laughs> and you could, you could see where I applied the fertilizer and where I didn't or where I missed. So it's a little bit too obvious. It's just a, a learning a learning curve, learning experience, I guess. All right, I did my lateral passes. I could do a vertical pass, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go to the other section of the lawn. Man, I see Carbon Pro G all over the driveway. So, hope Carbon Pro G just gets blown into the to the lawn with the wind. Okay, I got the edger setting again on here. Oh, nothing's coming. Oh, there we go. You know, to be honest with you, I think I should have laid the fertilizer. Uh, this It's March, but you know, this is my basically my April application for the month of April, but I think I should have laid it in uh, March. I should have went early. Because you know, I'm not, I'm not doing heavy dose of nitrogen just, just yet with the 12-024. But uh... I think it would have been good to go ahead and have laid that uh, in the month of March. I felt like maybe it was necessary given how much green I have in my lawn already. I'm basically going off of last year's schedule. Because last year's schedule I started fertilizing in April. But this year it seems like everything's starting up early. So I think maybe I should have uh, just done it for the month of March. Okay, we're done here. Back to edger setting. Let's do a perimeter walk two times. I'm noticing some uh, red leaves on my lawn. I think I might have fungus, but I'm not sure. I gotta verify that and see exactly what that is. It's popping up in a lot of areas. I don't know. I did apply a headway. Yeah, was it headway? Yeah, headway G. I did apply Headway G like back in October or September. October, I want to say. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe that didn't do anything for me. Second perimeter pass here. I still have some headway G left over, so I may go ahead and apply that. Not today, but uh, I'll figure out when. Probably when the grass is more actively growing. Um, our temperatures haven't been quite hot yet to get Bermuda that boost that it needs. I think the Bermuda is just growing because the sun's been out and it's not so cold. It's not winter cold anymore. I mean, you still get. Think in the evening we still get some temperatures in the 40s but barely it's more like uh 50s now like uh, high 40s uh mid 50s Q 
Okay, done with the perimeter walk here. Open it up wide open. And make a pass this way, straight on. Close it up. Open it up again, going this way. Make a turn, just go straight down this way. Close up, come back up here. I think I got pretty much everything. Most for the most part, let me do one more pass right here. Yeah, close, a little bit do some here, close, okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna head over there to the last part of the lawn. If you look at the, the condition of how it, the lawn looks over here, man, it looks like it's been neglected quite a bit. Yeah, it's just, this section is just, it's hard to maintain because it's just, I got these tree, I got this tree over here that's dropping acorns and then twigs. It's just heavily shaded too, so it's just hard to grow Bermuda in this area. I mean, I already thought about doing zoysia uh, on this section of the lawn. That might be uh, in the future. Yeah. But, yeah. edger setting still on. I'm just gonna go ahead and spread up and down with the edger setting to slowly cover up the lawn. You know what, let me go vertical. Yeah, let me go this way. I've already done horizontal spread. that pink stuff on my leaves like almost everywhere Done here. Go ahead and just open it wide open. Do a little diagonal pass right here. All right. Carbon Pro G laid. All right. Next up is uh, 12.024. The stress. All right. So we need to lay uh, four. Uh, today I'm laying four pounds per thousand, so um, I got six thousand square feet to cover. So twenty-four pounds is what I need. So get this here, tear this to zero. We're at we're we're on pounds right now, just to make sure that you guys see that. I will keep you guys posted on how it goes. Um, Maybe shouldn't be expecting too much from this because it's not really nitrogen-based uh, fertilizer. This is just potassium-based, right? So let me show you the pro. Let me show you how what this 80 SGN looks like. Look at that. Look at that stuff right there. That's some fine material. It's like I said, man. It's almost like sand. Okay. So we're gonna go 24 pounds. Oh, first of all, let me uh, check my spreader setting. First thing, first thing to do is always check your spreader setting. So uh, let's go down here and take a look. Today we're laying one pound of potassium per thousand square feet. So with the Earthway rotary spreader, it needs to be set at 11. So that's what I need to do right now before I forget, because that's uh, that was one of the things that I forgot to do last season was that I didn't change my spreader setting after I had applied Carbon Pro G. So, 
Move this over down to the 11. Oops. Right there. You know what? Actually, I'm going to go 10 because this is my first time applying it. I want to go slow, actually. I may want to uh, over overlap my areas that I went through. So I've got this closed. Man, this, this, uh, this hole is kind of showing. I'm a bit concerned that it might leak out. Let me, uh, let me adjust that. Okay, I listened these screws here they are a bit tight so it might have been the reason why it wasn't closing so well but if you can see it actually needs to be all the way this way in order for it to like not, not slid open yeah because i see a little gap right here and i feel like the uh fertilizer is going to fall out so there's another screw here that i can't really get to because this hopper's in the way um, yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to get to that, given uh, how everything's set up. But, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit concerned that it's going to leak out, because this pro size is very small. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. I actually can't really see the gap right now, but if I, let me open it. So that's 10. And when I close it, you see that right there? That little gap right there? I'm afraid that's going to cause it to uh, leak. So I'm pushing it with my hand right now to close it. I don't know. I'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. Let's uh, get this to 24 pounds. And that's what we need. 4 pounds times 6. Probably 10 pounds. All right, I'm going to go slow here so I don't go over because it's going to be hard to uh, keep track of the numbers. If I keep it at a simple 10, then it'll be simple enough for me. 10.003. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit of this in here just to see if it'll leak out of the spreader. I've got the spreader closed. I've got some debris in here. All right, so let's just uh, let's just keep an eye down right here to see if it leaks out. So I'm gonna pour just a little bit in just to start it off and see. Get it right there in that spot. Let's see, I don't see anything, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest. Okay, looks like we're okay for now. Okay, so that's 10 pounds right there. Got another 14 to go. Man, it's, the pro size is so light. Look at that, I got some of that on the ground. This is expensive fertilizer, man. I can't afford to uh, waste that stuff. <laughs> Ooh, 10.01, that's close for me, that's close enough, okay. It's getting more windy. Okay, now we got 20, 20 pounds now. So we're a little bit over 24 pounds, which is, I think, okay. All right, I got the setting at um, 10 rather than 11, because it's my first time applying. I do plan to overlap, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Okay, I'm going to do one perimeter pass just because uh, I've never used a, my first time doing this product. So seeing how thin it is, you know, it's uh, a bit, got to be a bit cautious with it. I got it on 10, so okay, I got it open. Here we go. 
yeah, I do see it coming out. Man, it's so fine. This is like super fine fertilizer. Man, it, it literally feels like you're uh, fertilizing with dust. Headway G was kind of the same way. You know, Headway G and uh, what was the other insecticide that, or the insecticide was using? Delta, Delta Guard G? Yeah, those things were thin, man. Those things were small. And this is just as small as it, comparable. Okay, I did one perimeter pass. So now let me open this up full way. Start going up and down. I should just follow the strikes of my lawn. Haven't been striping pretty uh, very well lately. And I think, I mean, since I got the Toro, I never, I didn't really see stripes that well. But it could just be due to, uh, I started late in the season when I got the uh, mower. So when I was like peak season using the uh, McLean, I was laying down some stripes, some pretty good ones too. The only problem was just the tire marks. But with the Toro, wasn't able to get, uh, wasn't able to accomplish the same thing. Okay, it's my first pass. Yeah, I definitely gotta be doing some overlapping here. Um, yeah, let me just go ahead and go to the other parts of the lawn first. Because, you know, I do have it one setting lower because it's my first time doing it. It's always good to like, go lower than the expected or the uh, amount they tell you to. Okay, so we'll go one perimeter pass and then a full run. Edge setting here. I'm excited to use the 14714 once we get to uh, May. I think it's going to be great. I don't think uh, I'll have any regrets using this product. So far for me, everything seems promising. Open setting, go. Yeah, when I ha was using Yard Mastery last year, um, yeah, it was just hard to spread that stuff. Fill size were huge. I mean, it's it was literally the same size as Carbon Pro G. And I think, I just think the Earthway 2050 pre-spreader is not meant for certain fertilizers. Yeah, I think the reason that's the reason why. You've got people recommending certain equipment with certain products, fertilizer products, uh, in order to apply it, which makes sense. I'm going over here to the other side now. Edge setting, perim one perimeter pass and one full, and then Then we'll go back over it again. The prill size is so fine that I can barely I can barely hear it coming out of the spreader. Like when Yard Master is being released. I could hear it. But with this one, I can barely hear anything. But I do see it coming out though. Okay. 
full open setting. Let me set it down when I do this because it, it was like falling out. Okay, here we go. You don't even hear it bouncing off the fence. <laughs> That's where this thing it feels like you're just uh, laying dust on your lawn. That's what it feels like. Close. Open here. Make it pass straight down here. You turn it back, come back this way. I see some of it being dispensed out in the driveway. All right, close. All right, last section. Then we'll go do a... Yeah, so I am dispensing this a lot uh, slower than uh, the recommended rate, which is okay. Same thing with this, doing all edge setting on this. Yeah. Oh, I can hear it uh, ricocheting off the leaves on this side of the lawn. back over here okay, now this time I'm gonna overlap it going across sectional I might actually you know what I'm gonna do another perimeter too let me do a let me do another perimeter run Okay, go across, open up, All right, here we go. So next time I apply it, I'll do it at the 11. Now that I know like how much is actually being spread out. But I do like doing this at a 10. Just know that it just makes me just makes me feel better that I know I'm getting better coverage. I get better uh, success this year with the uh, spreading because last year I had a few problems but uh, I hope I do a better job this year and then full open I started where that cross section of the concrete was Close. Go ahead and open 
getting this up all the way. Spread open. It's like I said, Headway G and uh, Delta Guard G basically felt the same as this product here. Pro size. Very, very small. Okay, we're almost done. Going back. One perimeter pass, and then I'm gonna go cross section this. Side. I'm gonna go up and down. Close, and I'll open this up. I'll go this way up and down. I'll take a little bit wider turns on this one. I'll do about three foot turns. Wind keeps blowing these twigs into my lawn. You notice that I only have one tree in my lawn, or two trees. I have a small redbud tree and then a huge uh, oak tree. And all these twigs and all these acorns aren't coming from my tree. Yeah, this 10 setting might be a little bit too slow, but at least, you know, that's good practice for me. I go back to the center, because the center lawn is my primary lawn. Section here is the most important section of the front yard. Got to make sure this is the best looking part. I guess that little corner over there too. And this section, <laughs> It's actually the best section, but it's so far away from the street, people can't really see it unless you come up to the house and you can see it. You know, if I were to compare this side to last year, it's uh, it's almost the same. I mean, it's 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 got a little better structure with the grass and all, but as far as like how it looks, <laughs> it still looks pretty pretty dead compared to last year. Same thing. Can't waste product, man. It's expensive stuff. <laughs> 85 bucks a bag, man. I haven't calculated how much that is, like, per pound. But definitely probably one of the most expensive fertilizers out there. It's up there with Anderson for sure. Ooh, I got a big section over here that's just, like, sitting fertilizer. 
This stuff needs to be blown into the grass. 100%. Uh, the stress blend both into the lawn right now. So I waited until the end to do my blowing. I gotta leave the house by like 12, so I'm not gonna have time to do a hand water unless I wake up really early tomorrow and, and uh, get off that uh, RGS and Humic 12. Because i got to do it three times, basically, because I've got that uh, bottle that holds uh, 32 ounce, but, you know, you put about 24 ounce of product in there to spray uh, 2,000 square feet. So for me to do uh, 6,000, I've got to do it three times. So i got to get everything, I basically have everything ready to go so that I don't waste time. Man, a lot of sedges, but... I took care of that the other day. If you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. It's a really short one I made. Just basically explaining the rates of how to apply certainty. Um, there's a lot of people that are confused on how to apply it. So I talk a little bit about it, how to, uh, what you could do to apply it, especially when you're mixing it with Celsius. So watch that video. It just, uh, just came out today. The way I set my schedules up now to apply uh, my applications, my fertilizer stuff is all on the weekend. Like, I, there's no way I would have time to do it on the weekday. I would have to split it all up if I did. I would have to do like maybe just one round of Carbon Pro G and then come back a few days later and put down the, the fertilizer and then come back again in a few days and do the, uh, the liquid stuff. So. If I want to get it all done on the same day, at least the majority of it, then I got to do it on the weekend. And I think that's pretty much how a lot of people are doing it anyway, so. But yeah, trying to time that out and then also spread out the schedule so that, you know, I'm applying it consistently every like uh, four weeks. It's a bit challenging. Especially when weather and all kinds of things start coming up. You know, you can't really consistently get everything laid down like how you have planned it but it's always good to just go ahead and make a schedule for it you know and then keep it try to try to stick with it you, know, you, you may not 100% get get everything how you had uh, scheduled it out but you at least uh, you have something already planned and then with that with, with you doing that you also can plan ahead too like if you know that you're going to be putting it down on a Saturday, maybe Friday evening you kind of prepare your stuff. That way you're not spending so much time on Saturday to do all the the minute stuff that comes with applying your stuff, uh, your fertilizer. So, you know, it's always good to be organized and keep up with what you have planned. All right. I think I got majority of the stuff into the lawn now. Let's go put turf plex and neutrosolve. All right, turf plex neutrosolve time. Let's go ahead and fill up the tank with. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna do three gallons. So let me just go do uh, two gallons of water. Ah, man, this thing's getting stiff. Okay, shake up. I hope I hit me. So, let me talk about this real quick. I ordered Turfplex like several weeks ago and the shipment was supposed to already be here. I ordered four gallons and uh, they were supposed to come like sometime last week. But uh, some reason the package got damaged so they couldn't, couldn't deliver it. So I had to contact Yard Mastery and they went ahead and sent me another one same day that I let them know. So. Kudos to them. Their customer service has been pretty well for me. Um, I'm not going to say anything bad about them. They've taken care of me pretty well. And I just don't understand why some people have issues with them. But, you know, maybe they're asking the wrong questions or they're talking to the wrong guy or something that's working there. I have no idea. But their customer service has been pretty well for me so far. So I have nothing bad to say about them 
All right, so we are gonna do three gallons. Uh, I am applying this at six ounces per thousand today because since laying down the stress 12024 at the four pound per thousand square foot, that basically is a one pound of potassium that I'm laying down, but it's only half a pound of nitrogen. So in this case, um, laying going by the six ounce per thousand square foot is gonna make it 0.1 um, pounds of nitrogen that I'm putting down and I'll be doing it again. It's a bi-monthly uh, application, so total 0.2 for the month. Uh, so I'll be laying a total of 0.7 pounds of nitrogen just for the month of April, which is not a big deal. So but once I once I switch over to 14714 and do the 0.9 pounds of nitrogen with the granular, then I've got to cut this back. I got to cut this down to three ounces uh, per thousand. So with uh, six ounces. For three, uh, three gallons, I'm going to do 18. So, there, 18. Okay, I'm going to pour that in. Okay, set that aside. Now we go with Nutrizol. This Nutrizol is about to be out. I do have more Nutrizol. So, Good thing there. This also is getting laid down today at six ounces per thousand, so 18 with this. Okay, 18. Set that aside, put that in here. Clean this bottle up in here and get whatever's remaining. Okay, top it off to three gallons here. I think this is a good walking pace, perhaps? I don't know, we'll see. Essentially, I just want to try to get this all done in one pass, right? I'm not trying to repeat my pass and go over it again. You know, one question that came up is uh, whether you should put a surfactant. I guess the wind just popped it. Okay, here we go. Whether you should put surfactant with your liquid fertilizer. Uh, it's not necessary. You don't need to do it. Matter of fact, the instructions tell you that this fertilizer actually should be watered in. Even though it's absorbed through the leaves, foliar, um, when you water it, your granulars in like the next day you uh you're taking some of that liquid fertilizer with you into the ground so that it can be absorbed through the roots as well 
So no, you don't want surfactant in it. You want to be able to give it the opportunity to get down to the ground if it needs to be. All right, let's see where we are first before I continue. Okay, I've used one gallon so far and I've already covered more than half the lawn. So I'm gonna have to walk a little bit slower. I might have to do an overlap, to be honest with you. I'm still walking way too fast. I don't know what the walking pace is for. I don't walk like grandpa or something, man. All right, here we go. Gust of wind, stop for a second. Let that wind go by. All right, go continue. Step on this side here. Okay, let me see where I'm at right now. Okay, I'm past the one, uh, past the two gallon mark now. So I've got a little less than uh, a gallon to go to cover this area again. So I'm gonna do cross section, go up and down. Start here. Even though it's like springtime now, still getting some of these uh, fall leaves coming into my lawn from other people's lawn or yards. Just something I can't get away with. Just having a woody neighborhood. Let's see where we are. Oh. Uh, okay. I've already applied two, two gallons now. So I'm going to stop right there. So if you guys remember, that area plus the far end over there, the L-shape area, the lawn, that's like 3,000 square feet. The center lawn is 2,000. And this is like, I don't know. This is kind of where you dump the remaining stuff. So I've got a gallon left. Uh, you know what? Let me just go ahead and finish the cross section over here. And then, uh, then I'll finish out that area. So I'm putting a little bit more than uh, 0.1 pounds of nitrogen in here, but it's okay. I'm not overdoing it. Not a problem. It's when I start putting the 14, 7, 14 is when I need to start watching out. Let me start from the top. That's where the most grass is. It was looking good though during the summertime. I thought I was actually going to transform this section. But after the uh, cool temperatures and then the heavy rain we were getting, because this area, once when it rains a lot, it, a lot of stuff gets washed off. So all the ground, all the stuff that's in, in here is moving. water just uh, passes through easily and on top of that it's shaded as well so it's, a, it's also hard to keep 
keep this side looking good. Can't give up on it. This part of the lawn. Let's see what I got now. Yeah, I got less than a gallon left, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it by hand and spray. That's it. Let's go fill this back up again and go do the other side. Okay, given that my walking pace is quite fast, I should be able to have some some of this left over to do uh, some overlapping. So let's uh, let's see what happens. Go this way. I actually like going sideways because I feel like you don't get your clothes as dirty like when you're walking up and down. And also I think you can see a little better too. You can see kind of where you left off on your coverage. Because when I was going back like up and down, I was like having to walk backwards. <laughs> I didn't want to like turn around and do a 180. I was just trying to keep the straight line going. All right, on off. Let me see how much I laid. It shouldn't be over a gallon that I laid. Let's see. Yeah, I think, uh, I think my walking pace is actually working because uh, I know this is uh, roughly around six, 600 square feet. So it shouldn't have, shouldn't have uh, one gallon of product shouldn't have been dispensed in this area. All right, this area is 2,500 square feet and I've got about two and a half gallons in the tank. So if the walking pace is correct, I should be able to cover everything with what I got in the tank. Let's just hope I don't run out before I get to the end, all right? So let me walk a little bit faster. That way I can do a, do at least do an overlap. It's safer to do an overlap on your applications versus you running out, because now you're like, oh crap, you know. I didn't get the whole thing in. I walked too slow. This was usually my reference point where I stop when I go up and down this way.
like I spray all the way till I get to this tree. Stop here, move over one side, go this way. This way, tree mark. You know, it takes a lot, a lot more time to uh, load the liquids. But I feel like the coverage is way better than granular for sure. It takes more time to apply it, but the coverage is way better. Those granulars, you know, it's just shooting out of a hopper. You can't control that. You can only control a consistent lock and speed as it's coming out, but you can't get every single little area like you can when you're spraying. I think that's why uh, it's good to kind of do both, right? So you got granular application, then you got your liquid application. That's how you achieve a dominant lawn, in my opinion. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Okay, let's see what I've got left here. Uh, okay, I got about a gallon of product left. Start over here on this corner, go down. Go at a fast pace again.
right guys it's next day it's uh roughly around eight it's almost eight forty-five in the morning i'm gonna go ahead and try to get this down before uh i got stuff to do later this day so here i've got the human 12 and the rgs and i'm gonna get basically i took i've got two empty or three empty bottles here that i'm gonna fill up so i can make this go by really fast uh, i'm just gonna fill up Basically 12 ounces of each into each of the bottles. So I'll have 24 ounces of product in all three bottles. And then I'll go spread this out over 6,000 square foot. And uh, should be should be done fairly quickly. So just opening up RGS first. Make sure you shake the bottle, which I did. And I'm just reusing these bottles. I've cleaned them out, so should be good. Okay. I'm just gonna do this, repeat this three times. sewage out there for some reason. I don't know what that smell's coming from. It shouldn't be RGS though. Is it coming from this? Oh it is coming from this. <laughs> RGS smells like sewage man. Okay. Yeah make sure make sure you wear PPE. And uh, goggles, face masks if you want. But yeah, you definitely don't want this stuff on your skin. It's not like it'll kill you, but still, you, it may be hard to take off and get it off your skin as well. Alright, 12 ounces of RGS down per container. Let's move over to Humic 12. I've already shook this up. I'll do it again. One more time. We got 24 ounces of product there. Humic 12 RGS. Just make sure I don't knock this over. Waste some product there. Alright, here we go again. is to uh, buy a mechanical pipette that can pull out the exact uh, amount of ounces you need for the you have like a two and a half gallon jug in your hand you're trying to balance the jug Go to the yard. All right, got the second hose set up. Spray and pray. Really excited to see the results of. Uh, 24. I keep telling myself that I'm not gonna see stuff because you know it's not it's not really high nitrogen fertilizer. Get this nice and damp in this area first, and I'm gonna start spraying. Okay, here we go. Turning it on. Loading up. Loading up. Getting all that brown stuff in there. Nice vitamins for your lawn <laughs>
giving your line a healthy supplement. Back to water. The uh, lawn is not as flat and smooth as it originally was when we had did the sand leveling project uh, back in May of last year. So looking forward to doing it again this year. And I, I have high hopes that it's going to be extremely smooth this time. Like I've marked or I've, I've taken notes of what areas that I need to pay attention to. And I'm really hoping that I'm going to get at least the center line right here. I'm going to get that super flat. Like looking at it from this angle, I can see where all the undulations are. But if you look on the uh, other side, standing over on the east side of the lot, east side of the plot, uh, you don't see it as much. All right, here we go. Product. Dookie water. I don't know what it is, but it just seems like this side of the lawn just takes longer to do. Just takes longer to mow. Takes longer to put water down. Water. I think it's just maybe the shape of the lawn. Possibly. You know what? I smell some seawater in this uh, RGS and Humic 12. So the uh, the mentioning about sea kelp being in there, I believe it. I smell it. I smell that seawater in there, or you know, whatever it is, that smell. So that lets you know that you're in, you're in the ocean. <laughs> I don't really have a good sprinkler set up for my lawn, and you know, it's just it was installed when the house was being built, and yeah, you know, don't have a professional. Well, the the company that did it is is a landscaping company, but. You know, I wouldn't say they're professional. They like they know anything about turf because they do like trees and plants and all, bushes and all that stuff too. You know, so I wouldn't say like turf uh, turf industry is their specialty. But I guess it would have been nice if I had been into lawn care back then that I, I would know exactly. Uh, what I needed for the setup of my lawn, but that's okay. You know, I think I think what I've got now works. Uh, but I think hand spraying it kind of gets me gets me to a point where um, I can get water in certain areas that the uh, irrigation cannot cover. I'm just picking up mulch pieces here. Uh, when it rains, mulch falls into the lawn. It's a bit annoying. I know I've hit mulch barks quite several times already with my mower. Might explain why it's not cutting as well as it used to. I need to get it resharpened it's pretty soon. All right, here we go. I'm gonna prod it down again. I can't really tell where we're at as far as how much of the bottle I've used. Okay, I think I've used probably about three quarters. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to fill up the bottle with water too, but I think it's okay. I don't think it really matters. Uh, here we go. As long as you're walking, I guess, uh, fast enough to get the product in, then you don't have to worry about having to fill the bottle up with water. It's only to help you, uh, give you more time to spray the stuff across your yard. That way uh, your product is not just coming out so fast and you lose uh, the amount of time to get it all in there. 
let me actually fill this bottle back up with some water so that I can kind of not lose so much of the product because this is the last bottle here. Let me do this real fast and then we'll get over to the other side. You know, I had calculated before the uh, season started, I was sitting in front of the computer on Excel and calculating like how much product I need for the entire season because I had already planned out like what I'm going to put down and like how, how big of a bottle I need to buy. And the two and a half gallon bottle was going to be uh, sufficient enough to get this product in there monthly so I still feel like two and a half gallons is too much but it's really not because if I were to do some math here you know, two and a half gallons 128 ounces is one gallon um, that's going to make it 256 ounces for two gallons plus another half gallon which is 64 ounces so whatever that equates to uh, 256 plus 64 is that like 320 I don't know I can't do math in my head but um, and then I am laying down six ounces of product per month over 6,000 square feet. So 36 ounces of product per month. And that's, that's a separate, I mean, that's each Humic 12 and RGS. So 36, and then I, I, the number of months that I had to do it for, I think it came out pretty close to two and a half gallons, if I remember, if I recall. All right, let me turn the camera back over here. I'm gonna do another. I'm gonna finish off spraying, dampen everything up here, and then we'll be done on this side. We'll go over, go over to my favorite side. Yeah, I don't know why I came up with this technique to uh, lay RGS and Humic 12. Cause you know you do need to water in your granular fertilizer and I, I figured you know why not just why not just do that while you're laying rgs and humic 12. Alrighty, let's finish off this section of the lawn activate dookie water now wonder if I should just come up with some funny uh, sayings and terms while I'm doing lawn care. Activate Dookie Water now. If you guys are seeing like these uh, yellow spots in the lawn, it's a uh, it's grass clippings that uh, got accumulated from the rain and I didn't come out uh, soon enough to break it all up. It was just sitting like that on the lawn for like over a week. So that is why you see it as is. Okay. Oh man, so out of product. Guess I'm not gonna get that side of the lawn. What I can do is fill all these bottles up back with water and then uh, I can get that area down with some product at least. Won't be much, but at least it'll have some. Yeah, so, you know, this, this, is, a, this is a learning experience right here that I need to fill up all these bottles uh, full to 32 ounces. 
so that I'm not over spraying product into the lawn like I did. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Just want to give a little update on the lawn. Show you guys how things have been. It's been almost, uh, oh yeah, actually it's been a week now since I've laid the 12-0-24. And Turfplex, Nutrizolve, and tomorrow will be one week since I laid RGS and Humic 12. So just wanted to show you guys the progress, what's been going on, how the lawn's turning out. I haven't mowed at all this whole week. Um, wait until Sunday to do that. I'm actually going to have an event going on here. If I haven't told you guys already, um, Rolex is actually coming out here to uh, do a demo day on my lawn. And basically the uh, authorized dealer guy of Texas, Josh Ivey, is going to be out here. He's going to bring three mowers. And we've got about like nine guys that are going to come test out the mower out here. So they're going to use my lawn as a demo. And I'll be testing it out as well. Very excited to uh, check that out. So, yeah, I haven't mowed anything uh, since last week. But uh, you can kind of see the, the lawns greening up pretty nicely for the most part. So I think uh, things have been turning out pretty well. But uh, we haven't been getting enough hot temperatures yet. I think we've only, today and yesterday, have been pretty much the hottest it's been since... Uh, since that time, that, that day we had in the 90s of in March at some time. So today, today's high was 86, and yesterday's high was like 88, and we still had temperatures in the low 40s uh, earlier this week, and some in the 50s and 60s. So yeah, it's taking a while for the grass to kind of pick up its pace to grow in and stuff like that, but. Overall, uh, looks like the color is changing, it is getting greener. Could be due to the Turfplex and Nutrizolve, so it's a good thing. But mowing frequency has not picked up yet. Um, still, we're mowing at once a week. I was supposed to mow, I guess, yesterday, but it didn't. And like I said, uh, we're going to wait to do all that on Sunday. So, I'll be filming on Sunday. Um, I'm going to try to make a good video out of it, give my own reviews about the uh, mower, and then get some information from Josh Ivey as far as uh, Rolex, uh, get some questions answered, and then uh, maybe I'll bring out the, the Toro uh, Greens Master and do a little comparison. Not sure if we're going to get to that point, but uh, we'll see. Let me show you a little bit of the lawn up close. Still got some troublesome areas here, and seems like maybe these areas might be deficient in nitrogen or something else might be going on. Not too sure exactly, but it hasn't, it's not really that full as uh, compared to some of these other areas out here. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Standing from a distance though, it does look pretty good. And I can only imagine if I had been mowing every day, I probably the lawn would probably have gotten a lot uh, filled in than now. But again, the temperatures haven't been that hot as well, so that plays a, it does play a role. So having not so hot temperatures plus the frequency of mowing not being picked up yet, um, those are all attributed to. The grass not growing as strong as it should be but like I said uh, I'll be uh, mowing on Sunday and then after the, the following week will be my second application of the month to lay down Tarflex and Nutrizolve and I will be introducing PGR this time to the lawn I'm gonna start out small I'm gonna go 0.15 ounces per thousand just to introduce it to the lawn and then uh, go from there the next application will probably be 0.25 and then I may do my uh, original plan of 0 0.375 in there but yeah I'm just gonna start out small and see how it goes and hopefully I'll start seeing some changes but yep stay tuned guys uh, Sunday is gonna be a good shoot I uh, can't wait to 
check out the Rolex myself. I've only seen it online, I've never seen it in person, and I can't wait to try it out. So, good things going on on Sunday, guys. Stay tuned, and then I will try to publish that video as soon as possible. And you guys can, if you guys are in the market for a new uh, new mower or haven't started real mowing, well, you got some options now. Rolex being one of them. So I'll try to get a review out there and get my or my honest opinion on what I think about it. So, all right, guys, take it easy, and uh, I'll see you guys on Sunday.